programs and the programs that follow up helping people apply because those applications are going down um, or they're seeing some of them trend down and they want to make sure that we're utilizing those dollars. Um, I really think it's the same means to the end, right? Is that if they're applying for these programs and utilizing them, they're going to be rehabilitating their home. Same if we're doing more inspections, getting more people being proactive. You know, if we're getting our field crew out there to be doing those inspections and having a clerical person push that paperwork, I really think it's, it's using both hands for the same end. Can you talk to me a little bit about that position? I think she was telling me, I can't remember if it was half funded by, if it was HUD or it was something um, half funded by that and then it would be half city dollars. Can you explain that? Sure, so earlier this year we discussed with Daryl and Jill and, and Marty an opportunity to add an inspector that would be partially fund with our community development block grant fund oh, through HUD. Yeah. Um, we would have liked to get it to, you know, closer to, you know, 80 to 100% funded through those. We weren't able to, identify enough funds to cover that much. So we were able to identify potentially 40 to 50% that could be covered with those federal funds. The rest would have to be picked up with city dollars. And it, exactly what you described, it would be a hybrid position where we would have an inspector um, that would work with neighborhood services and inspections, that they would be out in the field quite a bit, but then also pushing the program. So if they identify violations, whether it's exterior paint, roofing, whatever it may be, uh, in return, they can apply uh, or provide the information to those property owners and or tenants or landlords to say, okay, you have these violations, but we have these certain programs that can help you. Now, I think there's other ways to do that without that position, um, you know, with the staff that we have uh, by just pushing, continue to push those programs, work with the current inspectors that we have, work with our rehab techs that we have uh, to continue to push that. So I'd like to look at that. But if that's true, why aren't we doing that? Or you know what I mean? But if you if you think that's true, then why is it just we haven't had that concerted effort or not enough time, Daryl? I'm not going to be yeah, critical. Yeah. I'm just asking. Right. I mean, could it be enhanced? Absolutely. It could get better. Maybe oh, with yeah. some, maybe with some bit more um, handout information that we're able to do on site. Uh, the inspectors, when they do recognize a situation that they feel might be part of that program, do currently refer them to their department yeah. so that they can hopefully get some funds. Unfortunately, but, a lot of times those funds just, it doesn't match the programs. And well, and I think sometimes too, like Jill and I were discussing, and I think that it's understandable, right? Like, like you get a flyer or you say, hey, call this department, mm -hmm. they don't. You know what I mean? Like they don't follow up, they don't know how to <clears throat> utilize the program or fill something out. And that's where I thought maybe an intentional position would really move the needle on some of this. We've, and and it, it re, I'm reaching here to try to remember exactly what it was, but I believe it was a roof structure. It wasn't uh, rotted soffits or anything. I believe it was actual roofing that had we were able to get a, a lady taken care of with that program. It's been about a year and a half ago, but at least we did. We know oh, one yeah, quick sure success happened. story out of it, and it yeah. would have been to a situation where her house would have just disintegrated inside because she had water coming in, ceilings were at a point of coming down, those kind of things. So we were able to be successful there. And so, yeah, I don't know. If there's a way to be have one of these be more full-time and then one of them be a hybrid, what does that look like? I mean, is that a possibility that at work, all or no? Because they have enough clerical, and this is a, out in the field position is the problem, Alex. Maybe, maybe the code enforcement officer can become more proactive at what you're trying to do if if they if they're freed up from their clerical work. But correct, you're talking an entire you're talking a field person, and these two are clerical. I mean, I'm speaking correct. And that's, no, and that's exactly where I didn't right. know, and that's where I didn't know if they could split their time yeah. of pushing some of that or not. You know, you know, yeah. Right now, one of our code enforcement officers spends the first hour and a half, at least, and sometimes two hours of their day, doing nothing but clerical duties. And that frees, you know, two hours a day, or even if you went an hour a day, that's five hours a week of additional time out in the field being able to talk with people and work with those situations. So, and that's just one of the inspectors. And you multiply that out, it, it does yeah. add up pretty quickly to be able to give some more free time because our combination inspectors will do this as, you know, do code enforcement issues as well as their regular duties as residential code enforcement or inspectors, I should say. So. Two, uh, with, with Joe, who's split between the PD and our department right now, um, this will free up some of his time as well to be able to get out there. But um, the other code enforcement officer, Sheila, she will have a lot more time to be able to do this as well. So, yeah. I think it's something we and need to continue to work clear, with. Like, and how, how much hours are these two part time right now? What 29. 29 hours a week. Okay. 
Because that's where I'm just wondering if we put <coughs> one to full time and then the other one, the other time that they would have if we could use the CDBG funds to make them full time, but then have that other time doing that. Does that make sense? So then they both become full time. One is full time doing clerical and the other is doing 29 hours of clerical and then the additional hour or whatever being more proactive and following up. I don't know that the current staff would be able to blend into that position because you do have some certain amount of training that needs to take place and knowledge you need out in the field for inspectors. I'm not sure that either one of the current positions would be able to fill that uh, type of a hybrid. Not saying that we couldn't remove that person and maybe find another place within the city for that individual, but it would take more a different type of skill set to be that in, to have that inspector certification to go out and do that work. So. Just a quick question for Jeff: Would this fall under CDBG admin, and do you have? money in admin for that 11 hours plus benefits? Uh, I'd have to sit down with finance and Jill and determine if there's enough in there to cover. I think it sounds like it would, be, it would have to fall under an admin expense, which we're limited in what we can spend CDBG for admin. And I think what Daryl is trying to say is that um, versus spending that additional 11 hours for that clerical assistance, that those additional hours could be picked up by the inspectors because they're not doing that 11 hours of clerical work. So we may get more than 11 hours from an existing inspector that's out in the yeah. field, you know, Daryl. And know, just having more intent. Well, exactly. in, in quite frankly, I mean, the, the inspectors are not the world's fastest people put doing data entry. They're not. That's yeah. not in their yeah. skill set. Yeah, it's just like the people that are doing that job, they're much faster, much more efficient, and much more accurate, quite frankently. Um, at doing that job. So that actually will probably free up more than the 11 hours in those inspectors time. And the, pushing the CDBG, that is typically more a field officer's job to uh, well, present we, that to. Yeah. We don't have it right now, but yeah. Yeah, they would talk, it would be they would more talk about those inspection. programs. Yeah. That, that would it typically would, be yeah. what they would do. Not right. A, okay. right, which would be, you know, following under the housing code. I can support the converting the one part-time clerical assistant to a full-time position for the reasons that we've discussed previously and for the reasons you're discussing now. Can you talk to me about what's the dollar amount of one versus two? <clears throat> 33 or 66 roughly. Yep. yep. Roughly half of that number. Is that a motion? Do we need a motion? Yeah. I'll, I'll make that motion to convert one part-time clerical assistant to a full-time position. Second. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Water? I think you could do a lot of work with two. I understand that. I think moving this one to more full time and seeing where where it moves, you know what I mean? Like as long as you guys can help us track that, I think that would be really beneficial, especially then when you come back next year and say this is the difference that it made. Sure. Yep. I mean, if you can help track those goals, it would, it would really help me. So I think one sure. at, at this point makes sense. So I good. Four. I. I just wanted you to know where I'm coming. Oh, from. absolutely. Motion passes four to one. I think that's important for everybody to understand that there's an increase. It has to be, I, I'm not voting for any of these if we don't see results. And I, and I want to see tangible results. I want to know. And tracking progress. How, you know long, I mean? how long that person got out in the field more this coming year than the, so. And watch applications. You know what I mean? Like look, if the two of you can work more closely together on that and saying, these are the handouts that we need. These are pamphlets working with Jessica and um, everyone else, or and Jessica and Ann and other people, you know, if they need to develop something for you to take out there. I don't know if you have people on your team that I guess could make that, but yeah, or Jill, print shop or. Jill and her staff are currently um, combining all of the programs into one handout, one area, so sure. it's a lot easier for individuals, yeah. property owners to go through the list to see what programs are available. So that's in the works. And I wonder if it's like a follow-up thing. You know what I mean? Like if I'm overwhelmed by an inspector being there and I just got a handout, I'm not going to know exactly, you know what I mean? Or I might be overwhelmed in that moment in a call back a week later saying, did you look over the pamphlet? Are you interested in any of these? I think that could go a long ways. Sure. It's a little more effort, but it's like if you have a follow-up system, at least you would touch them multiple times trying to say, 
this is something because then you're really going to change the housing stock, I think, mm -hmm. in Sioux City. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and State Council. Mayor and Council, maybe to direct or to address the mayor's uh, wanting to see results, our office will commit to coordinating a monthly report that anything that changes or is added, uh, we will summarize and provide reports to you monthly on the, the impact of these positions over the, starting July 1st. Or even quarter. At I think it's okay to do it monthly, uh, just to show that what we said we're gonna do, we're doing. You do, yeah. yeah if you're offering monthly, I'll take it. Yeah. I was gonna say, I And I it'll show real quick whether it's working or not. Quarterly might suffice, but if you want monthly, yeah. Thanks, Daryl. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Jeff. You. All right, number three on your items. Human rights, discussion regarding proposal to reduce any other positions to accommodate a full-time administrative secretary. Operation page 178. Report page four. Good morning, Good morning. Karen Mackey, Human Rights. Um, I can't really afford to lose any staff, and if, if you don't have the money to add one, then there's really not much more to discuss this year. We'll figure out what we'll do, and um, you know I ask every year because you don't get if you don't ask, <laughs> and this was the direction of my commission to ask, but... Um, I understand the budget's tight and you can only do so much. And I appreciate you even considering this. This is a difficult one for me, Karen, because I, I agree with you, but the budget is tough and I've got these other ones mm -hmm. I'm looking at. But what's difficult is you do provide an invaluable service to the citizens mm -hmm. of our community. And I don't want to see you fall back. I mean, I remember when we talked early on and mm -hmm. the caseload was heavy and some of them just take time. Some of them you don't get cooperation from the parties and, and it's very difficult. So mm -hmm. um, it just makes it difficult for me to, to say, well, let's hold on for another year if we can. Some point in time, you're going to be saying, I can't hold on anymore. That's right. So, Currently, tell me, it looks like you were reasonably close with the part-time and with the partial funded. Are you reasonably close to, because you got two part-time clericals, which, mm -hmm. like, you're close to Waterloo. Is that what I'm reading? Uh, let's see. What's Waterloo? Yeah, they have three full-time positions and one plus part a part-time. Right. But that's a housing specialist more than what right. you're looking for. Right. Yeah. right. It's a different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get <clears throat> so, yeah, they've roughly got three and a half. And then I'm shocked that Davenport <clears throat> only has four. But Yes, and I know that Davenport in, in the past, uh, and I didn't have a chance to talk to their executive director. It was one of their frontline staff. So he didn't have all the information, but I know in the past they've done a lot of work um, with one of the uh, local companies that has a lot of in-house counsel. And so that's part of how they were able to, to do what they were doing. They were using a lot of attorneys from a major corporation in the Davenport area to help with a bunch of their work. But it is, it is surprising that they only have the staffing they do. And um, Dubuque, interestingly, um, most of their staffing is not related to investigations. They are doing... Can you say that again? I'm sorry, I was reading. Um, in, in Dubuque, most of their, the staff they have isn't actually doing investigations. They are doing primarily community engagement and... Um, race relations work, it's actually, it's fascinating. Some of the, some of the other stuff that you're doing too. Yes, but they're doing like it on steroids. They're doing a whole lot more of that. That's they own the casino in Dubuque, which is <laughs> what we should have done here, but yeah. that's beside the point. But. Anyhow, so it's interesting the work they're doing. It's um, been a discussion point the last several months among the other directors, sort of the, the focus that um, Dubuque the, is taking. What do they do when What's they even get, more unique is it's about 85% white. Yes, well, of course, you know, um, you probably remember it, Mayor, back in, what was I it? I remember uh, the early... mayor that wanted to import minority people from Chicago. Yeah. That killed. They're the, um, the city that I think it was in the early 90s had, um, you know, Klan crosses being burned on people's lawns. 
So they've, they've got some problems there. But uh, yeah. anyhow. And why are they doing all those events and then not invest? I'd maybe well, we're going they're investigating, hole, I mean, and they have someone who, like, that's their sole focus. They investigate. They have one person that just does intakes, and then they have someone else that just does the investigations. But they are just doing a lot of work around um, improving the quality of life, I guess, in Dubuque. Um, it's something, actually, um, Des Moines is kind of going in that direction too. I didn't include them um, in this information because they're so much bigger than us. That's apples to oranges. But, uh, but anyhow. Karen, what the broad categories that you deal with are housing, employment, what other categories? And is, um, <clears throat> isn't public housing a majority of the No, actually, cases? employment is the majority of the cases. Okay. It's probably about three-fourths, but the housing cases are so much more intensive. They take so much more work. Um, we also do public accommodation cases. We get a couple of those a year, um, and maybe one or two education cases a year. Um, we also have the authority to investigate credit discrimination, but we haven't had one during the time I've been here. Um, and at the state level, they maybe get four or five credit discrimination cases a year. That's because people don't know when they've been discriminated against is the problem. I mean, Point that, well taken, that's yes. the reality. <clears throat> yes. About three-fourths of your caseload is employment-related. Yes. Okay. yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, you know, discrimination still exists. It's more subtle in these days, you know. Seems to be coming very vogue in my opinion. But well, yes, <laughs> way, too, way too vogue. But you know, this isn't like the 1960s where people would straight up call you an epithet and refuse to rent to you or hire. They're, usually they're more subtle, although in the last few years, you've seen people being a little more bold. Yes, yes, anyhow. Is there a motion? Well, I, one last thing that I would say, because right now your um, admin secretary is at, what was it, 32 hours? Yes, sir. So I guess the one thing that I would, I would just say that I, I really feel and I, I think it needs to be said is I have a real problem with private industry that hire people at 32 hours or wherever that is just to skate on their benefits and not have to pay them as a full-time employee, I don't think that's right in the private sector and I don't wanna be a part of an organization that does that as well. I think if you're doing 32 hours, you probably need a full-time employee and I understand that there's always going to be turnover with that, right? You're going to because that person obviously wants to be a full-time employee. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're looking for, but they're working with the best they can get. So at any point in time, they get any full-time job offer, whether it's in the city or outside of the city, that person is going to leave you. They are. And so they're going to keep turning over even though you know you need the work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, and I just don't think that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And so if we're saying we know that it's full-time, but we understand that benefits are expensive, even down the road, I think if we could have a conversation about if there are part-time employees that need to be part-time, but they need benefits as well, if there's a different model where it, it might be more expensive, it's not gonna be as rich as you know our full-time employees or something like that, if, we can, if there's a hybrid type model, I think that would be really helpful and keep some of those mm -hmm. part-time employees, even if they were paying more into the system, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's something I think that we really need to think down the road of what we're, what type of options we're having for <laughs> our employees that would keep those. Yes. Because then if you, you need them for 20. Employees, I mean, that's legal. Mm -hmm. Class your employees so that if you're a 32 hour employee, the city will furnish 75% or 80, in that case, 80% of the insurance. You can class. <clears throat> I think that's legal as long as you class it and treat every 32 hour employee mm -hmm. in the city the exact same. That employee then would have to pay mm -hmm. for that 20% of the. Right, insurance. they'd have that option. And that's something that I would be a fan of. I mean, that's something that I think would really help with that this would. problem. It's not saying, like, I'm sure you could use the additional eight mm -hmm. hours, you know, of work. Mm -hmm. I get that. But I think the turnover that you're experiencing and those problems. 
are due to the benefits. People Absolutely. want to be full time and want to have that. Yes. And so I, I guess I feel a little bit stuck right. today. Maybe I look at the mayor or the manager for direction that if there's something we can do to explore, mm -hmm. well, what if they had a higher participation or we classified them differently to get those benefits? Would that keep them? And would that help them out? Or do we need to just right now in the meantime go this person is full time because obviously they need that so you don't have this? I think it would benefit all departments to have that as Mayor an and Council, we looked at this when uh, ACA was first implemented uh, and ultimately made the decision to limit the 29 hours because of some issues related to providing alternate health insurance plans for part time. We will revisit that. Uh, Go back and find that research and, and get it back out. Yeah, but also, at that time, the decision was made. Bob, I'd like to know. I, I think, I mean, it's not just her. It's, a, well, like Daryl, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, he's still got one that's part time. I guess I'd like to know how many in the city are affected by that, too. Yeah, we can do that. That's, that's a good question because I do think there are valid reasons for part time help. It's not all right. negative, or we're not trying to pull anything. Especially with you, Karen. I mean, if we're trying to pull something off here, you'd call us on it. So I think there are valid reasons for having part-time employees. Oh, so, I, you know, I maybe do the too, especially help. limited hours. I mean, mm -hmm. I understand when people we only need them part-time, but I think when you're doing 32 hours a week. All right. Well, let's get a report on yeah. that. All right. Thanks, Karen. Thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Gretchen. Mr. Moore. How hey, buddy. You, the next item up is um, police. Report page six, operation, operating page 251, discussion <coughs> regarding the addition of one full-time officer in the Uniformed um, Bureau Division and any reduction of overtime. If you show up, you must know that you've got this one in the bag. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. There's not, you, that's someone, no someone kidding. this week saw that the police department was advertising for an additional police officer, <laughs> and I said I had nothing to do with wow. that. Wow. This no, no, thing's no. already stacked against me. I don't have a prayer here today. <laughs> I would like I to make a motion, you Mayor. Didn't wield that kind of power. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I would like to make a motion, Mayor, now that Mr. Gretkin is here. <laughs> yeah, <long>. right. <laughs> exactly. You had to wait until you had another vote. Exactly. How did it just happen that he walked in just exactly. now? Exactly. Had him waiting in the wings. I'm an innocent man. <laughs> waiting in the wings. Hey, we need another cop. I'm new, here. but I see yeah, things. Yeah, okay. just walked just, in. That's the only cop. Yeah, there there you go. go. <laughs> He's <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah. Mayor, I'd now. like to make a motion to add one full-time police officer in the Uniformed Bureau Division. Second. Thank you, Julie. Yeah. I, no, well, I did. Uh, no, we're going to. Oh, yeah, I was, sorry. I was like, I'd, I'm just making a motion to get it on the floor so yes. we have the discussion. I, I would not be totally opposed, but I think in this particular case that the council has to do a direction that this person should be hired. You know, Bob says you need some in the morning. I don't know. It seems like the critical need is in the evening around this town with issues that we're facing. And so somehow I would, and I know we shouldn't, but I think we should in this particular case. I think the council should prioritize where that police officer is and it belongs in downtown. It needs to be an officer that's either on the foot, on a bike, as Julie sent me, <coughs> email, or, or at least a motorcycle or a car, but there, that presence walking the skywalk Yes. That presence walking the alleys, that presence of being after a concert. So you think thinking, that, are you thinking also in light of the developments that we have going on? Exactly. The, the last thing we need is to open these new hotels and continue to have problems downtown. And so we can direct, we can direct that, can't we? We can. I attended the police association meeting last night and spoke briefly, and they asked me about the addition of an officer, and I asked them about the presence on bicycles, on foot, et cetera. And they actually had uh, up to 17 officers that are trained for the bicycle patrolling. Because that was this last year, right? Yep, yep. And they're more than willing to get on the bikes and be out patrolling in any neighborhood. And they also said that they had recently updated their equipment to make sure that the bikes are ready to roll. So I think that that would be appropriate. And Mayor and Council, I don't want 
Thanks, Rex, for being here. No, I, we I don't want to speak. Story. Tommy had it in the bag. Oh, oh yeah, 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 you thought you had it. You, th <laughs> you thought it was going to go unanswered. I was, question, <laughs> and you were just waiting in the hallway to. Yeah, I was out on a limb, and it was being sawed. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. "Where are you guys?" I don't want to be, speak for him, but I, about my, entries my concern with adding a single officer is what that really accomplishes. I, I agree. I yes, and Rex might disagree with me, but having a visible police officer downtown will be very easy to track and it, it will have a very at least visible uh, result where, uh, where if they were assigned somewhere else they might yeah. not be as visible. Well again I'll, I'll repeat myself from last time and I'll say it again today though Bob so that I'm clear on this we need more off. Yes. No question about it this is a step in that direction. So maybe one this year might not have that kind of impact, but one next year, one the following year, I think we'll be glad we got back on track. And that's, mine's a long range plan. Yes. And not to have that immediate impact, although with what the mayor's outlined, it's gonna have some, it'll have some impact. A very visible impact right away. Could you work a person three to 11, Tuesday through Saturday? Could you make that be their shift? Possibly. So Possibly. Sunday too. I mean, we no, can. We have, we there's have, not a lot uh, going on. So well, you can float for different events and stuff. And like Monday that. nights, a lot okay. of Four Street's not open. Yeah. Which I'm just thinking. You know, I want. Monday. I want a police yeah, presence. I, I want a police presence in that parking but. ramp. We always get complaints in the parking ramp after a symphony. It just seems like if we had a police presence there after a concert. It'd be, it'd be nice if they walked the skywalk two or three times a night, different areas, because... Well, and to assist the and other we do. We're getting graffiti in that, in those ramps, and... That, that was one of the uh, reasons for the bike patrol. We have officers who regularly do skywalk patrol. I hear them get out there. We logged a lot of hours, Captain Kirkpatrick. Good. Uh, uh, reported those. We log logged a lot of hours doing There's that. Night shift. Uh, and now City Hall, with some concerns expressed there at City Hall and doing walkthroughs. So, so our, our patrol watches have been very conscientious about getting to those locations and spending time there. I even, uh, Mark and I have gone on <coughs> Skywalk Patrol ourselves just to get out there and, and uh, uh, just to make contact with the businesses and the folks along there to give some sense of uh, safety for them. But uh, and I realize that, I think we all realize that, you know, when you are short that particular night, that may not work. But I hope, I hope the intent would be that mm -hmm. as often as possible that, that, that we don't find a reason to pull that person off unless it's a real emergency <coughs> in other areas. And I'm assuming, I don't know how it works, I have no idea, but I'm assuming they probably put the bike on the back of their car. So the worst case is if there were an emergency, they'd have a car to get to wherever they needed to be, right? I mean, I don't want to limit them to that bike only for transportation. Do they have a car? We've been deploying them out of the station okay. with the bicycles. So they'd have to come back Which to the station. Which is still downtown. Car. You know still downtown. I mean? right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. That's, I mean, you guys know how to do it. I don't, but. Years ago, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark may remember this, uh, when Omaha put in a bicycle uh, patrol in downtown Omaha, the bicycle cops made more drunk driver arrests than the uniform cars, the guys in the car. Oh. They really did. Hey, I, before we, before you talk, because I know you you have some things to say, I just want to clear the air. Uh, you, you know that uh, obviously I like cops. I'm. Not, I'm I don't know. You, Dan you, pulled you. I don't know. In close station, you defend the firemen a lot more. I was and, beginning to wonder and, if you'd and make I'm the willing, <laughs> And I'm willing to take a look. And I think Dan's proposal is a good one, but I'm a little leery, to be perfectly honest. Simply because, and I called Mark, talked to Mark a couple days ago. Um, when I read Mark's uh, council inter informational memo, uh, of course the the price of the officer sticks out pretty good. I don't have it in front of me. It was 111,000 11, or something yeah. like that. Um, Mark had gone back and taken a look at the number of um, hours of overtime that could have been eliminated had they had uh, another or a new officer to serve that. It was like 672 hours. That I think comes out to about 84 days. 84 days, I, I called Teresa said, I, I don't know the pay scale is, she gave me the, what the pay scale was and it, it comes out to somewhere in the area, well I did it up here, 
very close to $30,000. So the first thought is, why do I want to spend $111,000 if I can spend $30,000 in overtime and accomplish the same thing? Am I saving $80,000 or $90,000? Now, Teresa, help me think through this thing clearly. And uh, the bad part about it is, I believe, is that officers are working so much overtime that there's a great deal of reluctance to to want to work extra. They want to be with family, they have other things to do, and, and I understand that. So if, if they were eager, I know they work a lot of, for me, you had the opportunity to work a lot of off-duty stuff. If I were going to work, I'd just soon work for the city and probably get paid pretty well than be working for, uh, you know, somebody else. Um, but if it gets to the point where they won't, they, they're, they're getting burned out and they need the free time and they can't get it done, then the importance of having more officers. Um, I, I don't know if that, I mean, if, if you were to tell me that you've got plenty of people who would work, I'd say the smart thing to do is to pay the overtime when we need them and put them in the spots that you want. Mark's recommendation was to go nights. Uh, this captain's a good man, and if he tells me that that's where they really need him, then that's probably where they really need him. And and well, you could do a hybrid shift, Pete. You could go. You could you start could. At seven at night and go to the we, busy we've, time. You, we've you, done we've done those before. All of those ideas bring with them, though, unintended consequences. The the power shift, as we used to run. Yeah, uh, you're very familiar with that, uh, Councilman Grecken. That brought a number of problems that we hadn't anticipated we would we would have, and we actually ended that pretty quickly. Why, or what were? Can you just elaborate a little bit? Or one of the issues became so we had kind of a specialized unit. Uh, these folks started to view themselves as we're out here to take the big calls. We'll we can't be tied up on lesser uh, calls of lesser importance. Yeah. Do things like traffic. And we found that we were losing the total value that we had of the officers because they were becoming too specialized. Well, to the mayor's point uh, of specifically issues that need to be addressed or that citizens are asking us to address, uh, I'm, I'm willing to, to spend the overtime to address that issue, but it won't do any good if you don't have people who are willing to work it. Now, the other thought that comes to mind real quick is the program is a good way, way to start, uh, Mr. Moore. I agree with you 100%. The problem that I see from reality is if you want to have even just one person a shift to improve, to take away the minimum staffing worries, which you would probably save some overtime, you're really going to need five officers to get three of them working every day of the year. Otherwise, it's just, it's just not going to work. They're 365 days in the year. They get roughly 125 days off, and then you're working 240 days. And a couple of people have got to be off every day, or people don't get their time. So I, I, uh, I wish we had the money. I'm not proposing that. I wish we could. It seems to me the right thing to do is to get five officers, get them started down the path the right way, and to be able to address those problems. Um, but I don't know the full impact of what we'll end up doing and what that does to, to the tax levy, but I, um, I wish that we could deal with it in overtime, but I don't know if that's a practicality or not. And um, have, have we ever I, thought, do you know in Altoona they they have a real chief down there, you know, chief. A, a real chief? A, a a real cutting, on the cutting edge of all new police technology. <laughs> but down there, you, and these guys get burnt out. Police officers make about 120 a year, right? Because if you work for the city and you contract, they contract. Contract with, through the city? With the halt, with the. Casino. Casino down and down. the uh, venture land. And so these guys get. So it's on their paycheck, which means they're getting retirement based upon that and that. So sometimes I wonder if we're not. They don't count the overtime, though, do they? The overtime doesn't go to the retirement, no. But 
They just get the base salary toward oh, their Oh, they pandemic. do. Okay. Yeah. That, no, no they do time. because they're IPERS. They're not 411. Oh, yeah, that's right. That, that's possible, yeah. So they're, four, they're, they're IPERS, so they get their retirement based upon their overtime because it's their salary, which I guess yours would be different. I understand. Yeah, it would be different. But anyway, uh, it's, I mean, those guys get tired of overtime, too. That's the reality. They can't keep sometimes it's yeah. hard to keep them when you got them working so much. And that's really where we're at. We're at a deficit, we have a <coughs> hole that we're trying to fill. And we do um, more often than we would like to work below minimum staffing because we can't find officers to come in and hire back. We've just, we've exhausted our pool and we've got, we've got the overtime piece stretched about as tight as we can get it. Um, to, your, to your comments, Councilman Grecken, we, we've had these conversations as I was putting those numbers together. Uh, the chief and I spoke and I told him, I said, you know, this is a fantastic idea. It's just, it's, it's a little, it'll be a little slow to, to de develop. If we hire an officer a year, I can show quantitatively the effect that that officer has, but I'd have to dig to find it. I'm gonna have to find it in the numbers. If I was able to put two officers per shift, you mentioned five, I was, the number we've thrown around is six. Not only would I have quantitative numbers I could show you where we've reduced over time, although the offset wouldn't be exact, but I could also show you that uh, anecdotally, the officers would feel that difference. They would yeah. be able to get the days off that they're trying to request easier. Uh, there'd be less demand for overtime. So we'd have both sides, but we'd be able to show the numbers where we've, we've affected the overtime budget. We haven't eliminated it or offset it, but we would affect it. <clears throat> Uh, and then also where there's actually a feel in the agency where we've started to relieve some of the pressure on the bottom side uh, of the overtime demands. But, but the other side is whether you add five or not. You added two patrol officers when? Two years ago? We two, two, two years ago to our traffic unit. Unit. Yeah, I can tell you, I don't know about the rest of you, but I see people getting pulled over. And that, to the citizens, mm -hmm. Pete, Yep. means a higher police presence. I mean, I can't hardly drive at 8 o'clock in the morning over the viaduct that they don't have somebody pulled over at a little problem stopping them at tires, tires, but either there or at uh, <coughs> the gas station there. there. It seems like every morning I drive there, so people are slow learners, obviously, but, <laughs> but it seems like they, I mean, and I think that means a lot to people. They're seeing a, a presence there, whether they're writing a ticket doesn't matter. At least they're showing a presence in the community, which I think is what, Julie's asking for, and I think that's what some of the downtown the merchants time. are asking for, is just a, you know, we need a Terry Lewis or an E from Beta again that gets to know, we, we, we do really well in the neighborhoods, but do we do really well in downtown with a police officer going to the businesses and Business. saying, because they don't have time, I get it, but would that, would that officer have, a, have an impact on that downtown area? We think it would, and in fact, we started doing a lot of that last year. Um, the chief mentioned we've actually gone out and uh, walked the skywalks. We stop in and talk to business owners, just Good. converse with them. Last year, we got the bike program up and running, and they were able to be out there. That was, of course, it hit kind of late in the season uh, in the fall, but we had a lot of great response from our officers. And again, that, that's an extra duty. doesn't affect our overtime budget because we were able to find some money with uh, another city department. but. That gets us out there a little more, a little more personable. The back side of that is, again, that's an officer who's come in and worked an extra shift or an extra two or four hours. And to get that person to, to volunteer for that eight hour shift where we need them to work the street and answer calls becomes <clears throat> pretty difficult. And Captain, can you then um, elaborate a little bit? I mean, I'm sure you can appreciate our struggle where it's Absolutely. like, yeah, if we had money, you bet five yep. or six to see you really make that impact. Of course, I yep. think that we would all do that, right? Council has always been supportive of us. We and are. we want to do that. But then to the point is, okay, so if we can afford to do one, we want to try to direct it to the place that we're really receiving the complaints. You know what I mean? And I know that you have a pleasant or a presence. I know that you go to the skywalks. I know that you go to the businesses. I really do feel that. But we continue to hear that um, and push where that is. So it's, it's I, I am never a fan. And I was just talking with staff. I don't really like operating budget as much because I trust our people to do their jobs. I don't want to direct you where you need to do things. But when we hear things, we say we really want to see it increased here. So I don't know if that one person would make a big difference, but if we do have the budget to do that, I would want to increase that officer, but I would also want to direct it where we're hearing all the complaints. Yeah, and I, I, 
I understand exactly what you're saying. We are getting the same complaints. We receive the same complaints about downtown yeah. and the issues, and we direct our resources there as best we possibly can. I'd be a bit <coughs> reticent to, to don't, don't get me wrong in any way, shape, or form. I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'd take any officer I could get. Um, but I'm a bit reticent if I have to assign them to a specific job. And what you're kind of laying out here is a community policing directed um, contact with the folks. Yeah. That's not really an officer that I have all the time that I can depend on to respond to calls. They have to be more easily accessible, so they're probably going to be on a bike or on foot. So I don't necessarily have a car close to them. I can't use them to get to a call. Timing is everything. If uh, the skywalk system is fairly large, that's a large piece of ground to cover downtown. If something happens over at, uh, you know, 3rd and, and uh, Jackson, and my officer's over at 5th and Douglas, that's it becomes that timing issue. Are they in the right place at the right time? So how effective well, do they become? Maybe, I, sorry, I don't want presence, to interrupt. I agree. Yeah, I guess can, the other somebody. thing that I'm just thinking through, like right while you're t speaking to that and I understand your point, then they're not available to go do other things or be, be maybe where you need to be. The other thing, I, I forget if I've, I know I've talked to the chief about it, I've talked to other officers about it. I go back to my experience and what I've seen with my dad being a police officer for so long and then my experience of growing up in Okaboji. I wonder if then to address the downtown presence in that situation, I wish that we had a better presence with like a reserve program or a program where they were doing that. I, they utilized that so effectively in Okaboji. Because, or well, Arnold's Park rather. I should say Arnold's Park. So it was the AP program that really did that. Unfortunately, even the county's backing away from the reserve program. They realize that putting them in places of liability when we would get their assistance, the sheriff's instructions were us to, we don't want them in enforcement actions. They were yeah. there to, as a visible thing, but they didn't want them uh, putting themselves in places of liability. Running reserves programs is uh, incredibly expensive because you have to dedicate training personnel to that. Yes. You essentially have to have your own academy staff on the department to keep those folks uh, certified, updated, trained. Uh, because they're not doing it every day, uh, the skill level is much, much lower than those officers who do it on a daily basis. And so the liability to the city becomes a concern with me on a reserve program. I like the concept. I like the visibility of it very much. Uh, well, regarding and it becomes what you, recruitment and everything. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, that's mm -hmm. what I think. You're training officers, and I, I understand your point, really. Like, you're mm -hmm. not. Uh, fully deputizing or whatever language you would want to use that it's like look you're doing the enforcement mechanism mm -hmm. but to pete's point about what they did in omaha of people on foot and catching more drunk drivers it's like yeah but you have them right outside the bars or you have them right outside the concert and they're watching and then they call uniformed and say we need to come enforce this and then so you have the presence then you call them in to enforce and, and I, I understand your concern. I'm just saying I mm -hmm. wish that there was that type of model because then you have literally a, a training pipeline or a talent pipeline where they are really excited. They're working with your officers. You better believe I'm applying with SCPD. Well, and a lot of the, one of the things you brought up is downtown. A lot of the things that I would uh, point to as an issue with downtown are not necessarily the fact that our presence or our staffing it's the, the things, the issues in the system, the lack of the, the uh, alcohol uh, treatment facilities, the mental yes. health facilities, the fact that our hands have largely been tied by First Amendment rights of folks as far as panhandling, things of that nature, the jail issues that we're thankfully trying to find some solutions to right now with that. We, Mark and I, are unable to, to do that broken windows policing, which means arresting for minor offenses, to deal with the nuisance issues that the business owners are complaining about because we have the jail telling us no misdemeanor arrests today. Yeah. Much of the frustration that the folks that are coming to you uh, is related to the stuff that we have no control over, regardless of manpower. I could have five officers on foot, but if I have the jail telling me no arrests today, we're not going to make that significant impact. We're not going to be able to do that broken windows <coughs> policing where we're dealing with the lower level offenses before they become uh, bigger issues. And we have been in the center of this issue with the homelessness and the, and the transient activity downtown and are involved in every committee in every uh, part of the city. We've injected ourselves into everything and tried to take the lead on the issue. Uh, because we're big stakeholders in it, because we're the primary ones dealing with it. 
and uh, there are no easy solutions to that. I think with the jail, I think we're heading in, a, uh, excuse me, the Justice Center, we are heading in a much better direction because now we can return to doing some of the effective policing that we've uh, somewhat been limited at recently. So um, I'm hoping that that will be of assistance. But we've put a lot of effort into downtown, and especially the foot patrol, the bike patrol, everything. We're doing a lot of things, returning to our old cast routes. Uh, we strategize about it constantly. We're out there constantly. I'll be honest, when I've been on foot patrol, I, I really haven't seen a lot of or been approached by a lot of the businesses down here. I mean, they might see us, but we're there. So um, we're yeah. spending a lot of time down there. Chief and, and Captain, maybe the, the better way to put it is not to direct you, but to recommend or suggest that that's how you use an officer based on the facts and circumstances as we have them at sure. the council and, and as the mayor. And uh, I agree with Councilman Gretkin you know, I, I'm open about it. I'd love to add six officers. The reality of the budget constraints is we cannot do that. But I, I can't in good conscience not support one additional officer based on the chief's report that he's given council this past year, based on what we're seeing in the community. I, I want to support, I have, I have a duty to support one additional officer. We've got to start somewhere because I don't think no offense to present council members and the mayor, but we're going to have budget constraints for years to come, and I don't want to keep pushing it off and saying we, we can't. You know, we want to add six, but we can't afford to do it this year. I want to add six, can't. Afford, <coughs> I want to start somewhere. No, now is we, the time, at least for this that. council member. I want to add one additional officer. So. And everything you say is taken to heart. Yeah. Everything, every message, any concern. I mean, and, and I get emails from all of you at different times about different subjects. And it goes to our larger vision of how we run the department and how we deploy resources. You are always giving me input, and we are always taking that input, and we are always using it to direct our resources. So uh, we don't feel, we feel like that is your role. You are supposed to direct us. The citizens are supposed to direct us. That's why we have town halls. That's why we go to all the neighborhood meetings. We want them, and we want you to tell us where you think the issues are so that we can direct our efforts towards that. And that's exactly what we do is Mark's resources, all of our resources, whether it be uniform, investigations, our civilian staff, we, we structure that and we, we structure our response so that we're responding to those needs and we know where the issues are. Uh, you don't call us and we say, well, that's just a council member. That's, no, anything that you bring us is taken very seriously and it directs our efforts. So don't feel like uh, you said something earlier there that I wanted to say, no, that's what we want you to do. We want you to tell us uh, where you want to see resources because that's how we're going to deploy. Uh, now, there are some things. One of the things that I'll go back to is essential services. Um, what Mark said, uh, our bread and butter and our, our, that the, the biggest piece of our work with the community is always going to be those essential services, the accidents, the disturbances, the things that pose an immediate threat to safety of uh, personnel and people and property. We're always going to put those ahead of everything because we have to, because we're response driven. Um, when we have the free time, when we have the resources, we're able to do more. We're able to do that community policing. We're able to uh, do the things to be a progressive agency. But we are, uh, you know, when you talk about numbers, the more numbers, the better. We will be able to, if given officers over a period of time, uh, increase our minimum staffing. Uh, it, it will allow us uh, more boots on the ground. It will allow us more creativity to do some of these things. When we have more cops, we'll put more people on bicycles. We'll, we'll, we'll do that, uh, you know, proactive, uh, more of the proactive stuff, which you obviously know we're doing an awful lot of already. So um, don't feel for a minute that you don't uh, direct this department. You do, and the citizens do, and that's, that's what we want to hear is we want direction. Do, do you have enough? Let's just say, I know we're not going to add six, Pete, I, <laughs> but how many more vehicles would you have to buy? Two? Or how many more officers? Six. Probably three. How many would you have to buy for if you had two? Because there are, un there are other costs, I just want to make yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, and, and we're not so tight on vehicles that we wouldn't be able to get by. Um, 
that's kind of a, it'd be kind of hard to answer. Two officers, I probably wouldn't add any vehicles. Five officers, I might try to add two to three. Mayor, um, did you equate an officer to the expense of about $1.50 per household? Yes. So that wouldn't include if we were to have to add down the road a car or right. things but like that. But to amortize those over, they're, they're not, the cars aren't terribly expensive for right. police. Right, because they're spread out. They're easy right. to add into the budget. Right. right, they're spread out. Yeah, but yeah, you would have, I mean, you got to consider that, yes. And additional fuel and all that sort of stuff. So let's just, if you added two, would your overtime budget decrease at all? Well, I think the report I gave you or the memo I gave you, I think it showed about a 30%. They're, they're full-time, they're 20, 80 hours. Maybe we could take about 30% of their time. I think that officer fit in that way. I think it was 670 some hours. So of that shift, of that overtime that's respond, uh, that is the, the reason for the overtime is that staffing shortage. We would affect that number, yes. But like I said, that uh, I think the year we looked at that was 5,000 and some odd hours attributed directly to that. The officer that you that we were talking about, I signed literally went out and assigned him to a shift, and just saw the days that he would impact. So, if we throw around numbers, I think maybe 30 percent of that actual officer's time would go to affect that that bottom line overtime number. So it's not a one for one, clearly. No, no, no. We'd be I doing you a disservice if we tried it to. It was three. Three equals one. Three bodies equal one full time shift. Right. Make a difference. Oh, yeah, at least, yeah. Yeah, that, that, from a scheduling perspective, mm -hmm. probably, right. yeah. Right. Yeah. So We'd be doing you a disservice one. to try to give you hard numbers. I sure. Mean, we mm -hmm. would, no, no, I'm just. Because, I'm not right. I'm just no, and, and, and I'd like to do that. I'd very <laughs> much like to do that. I'd like to say, well, this will, this will have yeah. this net end effect, but as we know, they're unpredictable things. I think about. You know, we're losing somebody to Kosovo for a year here coming up, and I wonder if what's going on internationally is going to impact call-up. Is that is that going to cause uh, the military to recall or bring in a lot of their personnel? I just don't know about those things. So, well, you don't know about a presidential election. Iowa could be important. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and we have already figured out they don't pay when they come here like they tell us. No, like they do. don't. They leave us. <laughs> They, they leave us, and then it doesn't. I'm not picking both, on both parties. parties. They both, both parties. stiff us. No, so. they do it until they need us again. Northwest yeah. Iowa is, and and I cringe every time we get a call from the Secret Service, Mr. Mayor, because of that very same Absolutely. thing. Because they want seemingly unlimited resources that we don't have when they come. They're usually pretty good to work with, but uh, we try to defray our costs by calling in every area agency: Plymouth County, Woodbury yeah. County, uh, DOT. We get anybody with a uniform uh, involved in, in assisting with us with those Dave, things. Dave, get your people ready. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. And, and you know what, to be get, honest, get all of them they're, they're, they're great partners. They're happy to do it. It lowers our operational costs for things like that. And they're people to get to get to be part of a presidential or a, a candidate yeah. visit. And But we do everything we can. We're very creative about that because yeah. They, just a single visit can be incredibly expensive if we don't do so. Get that uniform ready, Pete. Yeah, exactly. Pete, Pete. you get fit. called up for Still the best. Fit. Well, I can believe about all those, what about all your retired guys that, you know, are, are trained and ready to go, like <laughs> Pete and Simone I mean, and we, those we, guys? We tried oh, to, I'm not going to speak for Pete, Mr. Better. Mayor, but <laughs> trained and ready to go is a, is a relative term. I'd be a little... <laughs> I don't know. Ready Crystal's to go. Ready. Is, uh, I've seen him. He still can go. So yeah. we want to add it to the retirement out contract. There that could help. Yeah, there you go. Like the military, we can bring you back for the there next, next amount of years. <laughs> right. Yeah, That's right. A, re a reserve Put activation some money in the clause. budget for that. <laughs> I'm going to ask. County a freshman. Freshman. I would like to ask a freshman question. <laughs> is it too much of a sticker shock to add a multiplier of this dollar fifty so that we can have it start this impact in a bigger way I mean a dollar fifty per household is gosh I know that the dollar fifties add up I, I understand that but well, I'm inclined to vote for two because uh, I think the citizens yeah well, well, no, no matter, matter what talking, we do now nah, you're talking yeah, exactly. no matter, well, I'm also going to make some cuts that I hope you'll support too <laughs> but, uh, maybe we ought, to this, than, we ought to put this at the very end possibly yeah, yes. but I think no matter what we do, people are going to say we they're going done to. It. But if we continue but, to do but it, but the one not, complaint I get no. more than anything else is is that you can spend money on everything else, but you can't. Two things: you can't fix potholes, and you don't have police officers. That's the yes. two things I hear more than anything. Yes. And 
so I'm inclined to support two. One with a little direction, I'd like to see more patrol in the downtown. The other one, and, and, I, and again, that, I don't want you to put that person downtown on a Friday night when you're two people short in my neighborhood. That's not fair either. But, um, but I think that it needs to become a higher priority. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, we can absolutely do that, and we'll do it with the, in, in the same manner that we're doing bike patrol now. You've expressed it to us right now as a priority. It's been a priority of ours. We can, we can expand that. There's absolutely no problem with us adjusting our resources and, and doing things like that. And, and because you're telling us that that gives us a good go by, because you're telling us that this is important, uh, that allows us to, you know, tell our watch commander, say, this is what, you know, Mark will tell him. This is what I want to see on this, these dates. Uh, we've done that before where we look at the event calendar and we staff because of that. We want to have a visible presence when we've got an Orpheum event and a Tyson event, and we want to be downtown. That was one of my primary reasons for, for wanting this bike patrol is that visible presence, that visible accessible presence that doesn't go by at 30 miles an hour in a squad car that people can see and people can interact with and right. can go through the You can the flag lots. them down yeah. because they're going much slower. And, you know, Absolutely. we're increasing tourism downtown and we're looking for multiple day conventions and we want these people to get out of that hotel room in the evenings and walk our downtown from one end to the other. We've got committees, you know, doing work on increased lighting to mm -hmm. just make it feel safer. So having someone in those evening hours here or there that visitors see, and, you know, not just local people, but when you come to our city, to be able to see someone out there that says, oh, wow, they're lit up and they've got, you know, an officer and that's what we've been planning for, and that's what we intend to do and mm -hmm. have been doing. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, yes. those, those I will caution you, those other issues, the, the, the jail issues. Uh, the, right. The, yeah, but the, right. The I would hope First to, Amendment you know, I would hope to pass a passage <laughs> of this act, you know what I mean, in the mm -hmm. Justice Center. You hope that it's going to start to address this. We need other bodies to start funding mental health and yeah. detox mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that. Well, and that. that's another this counter is our function. first step. That, uh, yeah, the mental health. Amen, Chief. I didn't want to say it, but yeah, that's where you, we maybe need to start. Maybe you're wasting your time here with us. The State House. it sounds like, like where you want to be. <laughs> yeah. We're actually, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And, Congress. and to that, our department has been very active with another concept, this mobile crisis response. We have engaged the, the county in our new, the new seven county region. <laughs> uh, we have advocated for uh, mental health resources here we're pretty selfish we want the resources in Sioux City because we have you know the larger population we have the issues we yeah. want to be able to utilize those and from what we've doing been doing so far with the crisis center and the mobile crisis response we've been making a, an incredible amount of referrals and using these services so basically we're telling the county you know if you bring it we will come we'll bring personnel to you will find diversion for some of these folks that don't need to go to jail but need to go to a mental health facility and that will uh, alleviate recidivism like absolutely that's my... and that's what we're looking for meaningful solutions but on the other side of that is that jail piece i'm sorry some people just need to go to jail and when we get out with somebody and the jail's telling us don't don't take any minor uh, or make any minor arrests we know in about 20 minutes we're going to get a call from another citizen who came to a downtown event who's going to be confronted by something that they don't like because we couldn't take that person to jail. That's a part of it. Um, we'll deploy our resources, and I've, I'm incredibly proud of the department. I see every day how much we stretch our resources, how many things we have the officers doing. I try to give you guys reports. And we all reports we on, get that. No, but I, I feel and, the same and, way. and we appreciate that. But numbers will help. Numbers will increase our effectiveness eventually. They will increase our ability to okay. serve the public and our essential services. While we have the momentum, I'm going to make an, a motion to amend the main motion to add to police officers. And I need to specify Two uniform bureau division, correct? <laughs> Two plus one, Two he plus said. One? Is that what you said? You want two two full-time we police officers, and then, three. Plus, and then the three. mayor and I want to use the retired officers. I was going to say only, oh, if, oh, Pete, okay. only if Pete so, is the plus one. I was just plus about three. to ask, is, is Pete counted in that? You, because but, I, and you said, get you get what the, they pay the reserves for the sheriff, one dollar a year. Dollar. <laughs> yeah. Put me in, coach. I'm would would so you like that now? It's a motion to amend the main Got it right here. Because so. three takes equals one, they said. And that come Pardon? back at the end. Three equals Mayor one, they said. Suggesting. What are you saying? 
No, you can't. You don't. Three. Listen. Three yeah, it does equal one if you want to add to a whole. Actually, it's five equals one with your time off and every time off. So, yeah. But but they can supplement with what the they're two. doing dramatically with the with the couple. Well, I'm going to second make that. A couple officers work Mr. with the best of the department. So. Thank you. Can we council have, members? Here? Before we vote on this, the mayor made a suggestion that I would be more inclined to support. Um, is there any way we can bring this to the end to vote? Yes. After we look at everything else? Actually, well, I don't want to overrule you, but. Well, you got I a kinda, motion on the floor. Yeah, you got you well, to vote, you, but you, you can make a motion to defer until the end. Or you can vote on it, and at the end, if you vote in the majority, you can vote to reconsider. Right. Or you still have the final approval of the budget that comes to before council what day? We all know that you're, this is going to pass. So, yeah, but what's the day? The that budget's going to pass. We're in two, or three. I was going to say you don't want to do that. Well, no, we need four of us. Okay. I, I think. When's it come back? March 16th. March 16th. Oh, good. Day after Ides of March. But, but you could <laughs> do it that way, and that way we know now how we're going. But you can. Uh, we can bring it back up. I, hey, you tell me. I if we have to do it now, I'm going to vote no. But obviously, I think I support it. I'm saying I just wanted to end to see. Well, where we're why at. don't you mo mo why don't you make a motion to defer till the end of the, all the discussion? The other thing you could do is, Dan, you could rescind your motion, and then we could make <laughs> motions at the end yeah. after we get oh, through the I whole list. No, no, no. Sorry. I move we defer the vote until the end. Okay. Want to second that, Alex? I'm yes, cool. please. There you want. <laughs> Sorry to kill your momentum, guys. I, no, I apologize. I guess I don't know where we ended up. Two or three? Two. 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 Okay. <laughs> captain. Yeah, yeah exactly. This captain. This captain. I tried to work on. Two and so Pete, I. right? Yeah. Two, two and Pete. Two and Pete back, back in New York. Be like, exactly. exactly. We'll be back in about 30 minutes. Why don't you walk the downtown for about 30 minutes? <laughs> I'm in the skywalk. <laughs> Hop in the skywalk. I'm going to call down we, and out. We, we might just do that. We might just do that. Call motion on the deferral. Thank you, uh, uh, just in advance, I'm sorry. Aye. Waters? Aye. Bretkin? Aye. Moore? Aye. Here? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Chief. I was just going to say, please continue to communicate with us. We, we, uh, we're, we're extremely good at, at reaching out to the citizens and asking them what they want. We're going to let them at uh, town hall meeting coming up. We're going to ask them to be part of our strategic planning. So hopefully we'll see some more of those things that you've mentioned today as to their priorities for us. Um, I, uh, there's not a day that doesn't go by where I don't appreciate the working relationship with this council. I hope I've been responsive to all the concerns you've brought to us. We'll continue to do that. Mark and I have conversations daily about all of the things that you've brought up today and how we can respond to them. We'll continue to chip away at all these issues. Um, it's our pleasure to do so, and we feel, feel lucky to have a great city like this and a great council supporting us. So. Yeah, we truly appreciate that support. Goes Thank on. you for everything you do. Keep up the it's good our work. Pleasure. Thank it's you. our pleasure. Thank you. Break? <laughs> yeah. I'm the one that's had three cups of coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Next session, Give him utilities. another cup, we get up to three. <laughs> Report page seven, operating page 220, discussion regarding stormwater funding for parks maintenance, including any detention pond maintenance locations. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Mark Sims, Utilities Director. Uh, morning, I don't have Mark. any comments other than uh, you have the memo in front of you, so if you have questions, I'm happy to try and answer. We're on number five. Just on the detention pond? I was going to say, is it just about locations? that? Uh, there are actually five items you asked us to bring back. I was gonna, well, the detention the pond, wasn't that just an update of what the number yes. that we have? I thought we were going to get the actual ones we're doing. Yeah. As well as the pourbacks. That was just kind of a report. So. What? But on the Mayor? detention ponds, I thought it was going to be we a gonna, list of the. Yeah, we were going to get a list of them. The ones that okay, were, I'm sorry. I didn't understand because that. Because some were maintaining and some were not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that we don't know. That's all I thought it was. I could list some off the top of my head, but I don't know. They'd be completely accurate. No, no, no. That's fine. The mayor just yeah. brought up that he thought we had a lot of these and wanted to get. Yeah, away. there are six. Wanted to there get away six? from. And how many of yeah. those do There's we maintain? 
Six. six. All six. They're all armed. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, I just learned that there's another one that uh, we apparently have an easement on, which right now we are not maintaining because North uh, school system is maintaining it, and that's at North High School. But apparently. North Middle. North Middle, is it? Okay, I thought it was North High School. Uh, just heard that Monday, so. I don't know why development agreements need to say these. <laughs> you sucked us in on that with the school district, I'm sure. No, no. <coughs> that was by agreement, wasn't it? <laughs> why would we maintain theirs? Yeah, agreement with them. You said we're at the school district. But you, uh, you will if they ever tell you they aren't going to. When we have those development agreements, we just need funding to be able to then pay for that work, and that's usually not there. I don't think they even mow it. I don't think it gets mowed, to tell you the truth. But So are we taking up all four of these, five, six, yeah, seven, and eight? whatever you want to do here. And that's yeah, talk to me about the next one, Mark. Number two? Yes. Okay. Yep. Item number six, discussion regarding the Environmental Quality <coughs> Division 2201, miscellaneous expense category. Report right. page seven, operating page 337. Yep, and this essentially, it's in your memo, it's essentially uh, payment to other agencies. So the, the annual increase that we do for Gill is certainly in there. Uh, we weren't sure, I think, when we started developing this budget, uh, whether Gill was going to be willing to extend their contract. Uh, and we thought that if they did not extend, it was likely that prices would go up quite a bit for solid yeah. waste. So we're grateful that they are. Uh, and hopefully in another month or two, you'll see that contract before you to look at. But, but there so, will be adjustments made. Yeah, so that. I think this could be adjusted downward uh, to that, what I'm suggesting is a 3.4%, uh, which includes $80,000 for uh, some mitigation of the methane out at the uh, convenience center. A little bit of an unknown at this point, but... I almost wish we, I know this sounds horrible, but I almost wish we'd bid that contract to see what it is, because I know how high it would go. Because Why? I sometimes, huh? Because oh, if we check Omaha. Yeah. Check what happened in Omaha. No, I saw. I, that's why I'm asking. Why would we do right. that? Well, we wouldn't do it, but our citizens com will complain oh, about 3.3% well, increase. I when you. in reality, if you bid it, there's, you're probably looking at Way about more. twice what we're paying right now. And, yes. And I, at least then they would know that. They'd have a comparison. They'd have a comparison, but. No, because I've but seen you've that. already exposed Gill's number, which is not fair to them, and in a two percent increase is, mm -hmm. in this environment, seems reasonable to me. But, but um, I, I don't think our citizens understand. I don't think Omaha understood stood the sh sticker shock they got down there, and the co existing contractor didn't even want to bid it. It was pretty obvious by his numbers. So, so yeah, Mark just. Out of curiosity, uh, and we'll see the contract you say in the next month or so, but there was a lot of discussion previously about rates for seniors and being able, or maybe yes, only doing it twice a month instead of four times a month or whatever. Are there some considerations to give other options? Uh, or we, we sizes still, of containers, those kinds of things? Yeah, we're constrained with state law as far as doing uh, something special for a particular class of people, as you know. But uh, this contract does have the ability for somebody to order a, a smaller cart uh, so they could, you know, it's, I think it's a 65 gallon cart instead of a 90 gallon cart. So uh, that carries a, a slightly lower monthly cost. So there is some, some. yeah, if, if people would choose to do that. But they're, they're charged not for the, to, high, the largest cart that they have. But. They're not allowed to sign up for fewer pickups then to lessen their bill? Because no. I can't imagine a senior citizen, I can't imagine that they have less waste than... Certainly. Which is why the size. All right. I think it would be complicated because you've got seniors mixed in with, or a variety of people of different uses mixed in with people that use frequently. So uh, it would be difficult for those that are on the route to be able to... Yeah, know from day to day where to pick yeah, up and where not to pick true. up. Yeah, hard to manage like, it. And, and you're not really have much garbage, but when the grandkids come over every day, you know, I mean, that, right. just because we're senior doesn't mean that. I think that was the best the seniors advisory committee could come up with. Could come up Smaller with just the, the size of the container. 
based on what current state law the is. Neighbor can run over and put some of yours at night. When you, you know, I never thought of that either until <laughs> you brought it up that one time. But so you're going to order that, knowing you, you're ordering that smaller one, then you walk the neighborhood and uh, see who uh, hadn't filled theirs up. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I want to tell you, you know, you know that recycle bin we get that's free? I, f I overflow <laughs> that one, and yeah. my big, large container is maybe a fourth full. That is still free? So Those the free uh, recycle mm -hmm. bin? They're bin still bin. free? What, what color is it? Better believe it. Pink. Oh, pink, oh, pink. okay. Not all well, mine's them, blue. I was oh, going to say, not all blue, of them, but... Pink. But so I could get I, a smaller I drove down container for the garden, and only about 20% of the yes. people had those out. So it's time for you to go on the road selling that program again. I think we were right at what 52%. No, I right. think and we need to do more. I thought we were a little higher now. 54. Yeah. We're slowly. 54. Well, I'm telling you, they don't put them out every. Right. I drove no. Jackson Street, and I was amazed at how many people didn't have one out. Well, I mean, I'm an example of that. Just my wife and I. So, you know, we probably put out a recycle once a month because we just don't fill it that often. But we put our garbage maybe once or twice a month. I must be doing something wrong because ours overflows every exactly. week. Well, you do what I do. You bring that stuff home from the office. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, I have, the, I have the kids over a lot. <laughs> but seriously, it does overflow. I mean, I just fill it up every week, the recycling bin, which is Great. free. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's... So I should go with a smaller garbage container. And that's, you know, they took away. I had, what was it, $4 off a month as a senior citizen? And then they took that away because it wasn't. Is legal. the smaller container then going to be around the four dollars? So. Oh no. No, it's probably in the name, and we'll, and we'll see. I was going to say we'll see. I don't want to yeah, talk okay. too much about the pricing at this point. But, right. Uh, but the four dollars was the discount that you could for get. For the at senior, the, right? Yeah, it's just a four dollar flat four dollar discount. Okay, where are we going next here? Next item seven, discussion regarding the addition of one to two full-time utility workers in underground utility division and any reduction in overtime. Report page seven, operating page 356. Well, I still support adding one additional, adding one utility worker, even with your memo. I think they really need that for safety reasons. Mainly for safety reasons for me. What license do they have to have? An underground utility contractor? No, the state requires for somebody that if there's a main break, if the water line is exposed, then somebody with a state grade two license. And that can take, as I said in the memo, anywhere from a year and a half to four years, depending upon their previous experience. Uh, if we can hire somebody already with that grade two, that's a great advantage, but it's difficult to do. So like the contractors, do their people have to have that or just one person? They, we have to send somebody with them if, they, if there's not a grade two on site or they don't have a master plumber. So the no master, master plumber, plumber is the one exception <coughs> to that. To, well, well, utility contractors not? Like those guys have utility <coughs> contractors. Not, not all of them have that master plumber, no. So, not master plumber, right. but they have a utility contractor. Right, plus. yep, I don't believe that qualifies. I bet it does, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Can we attract someone with that level of expertise for the 85,000? Yeah, I'm sure we could, yeah. What are your thoughts, Mark? How, how would we be able to improve some of this or some of the efficiency? I know I've spoke with Dave before and different things. I mean, I want us to really be able to streamline practices and improve efficiencies. Obviously, we want to... Um, mitigate costs, you know what I mean, in addition to the budget, but we also want to really improve safety and reduce those overtime and the burnout. And I mean, the thing with this is they are very dangerous positions, you know what I mean, especially when you're tired or you're working long hours and overtime. Right. What, what are your ideas, I mean, for streaming this? Is this really going to make the biggest well, like difference if we add one or... I don't know, Dave, if you have feelings, too, of how we can really improve this. And as, as I pointed out in the memo, this probably has little impact on overtime talk. Yeah. Uh, if you were to add a full crew, that would be potentially exactly. a different story. But that, exactly. that's three people plus a labor supervisor. Uh, and then you could staff that afternoon shift. Uh, but certainly, as people work more hours, they're prone to more accidents. And I think we could probably attribute some of our injuries to that, not all of them by any means, but I think that uh, 
you know, they start to make less uh, calculated <laughs> decisions, if you will. It's just easier to, you know, not think quite as much because you're tired. And, uh, and if we had so, that three-person crew, what else could they be doing? You know what I mean? Or would that be just full-time here? I mean, we would have enough work for them to be doing that? Yeah, or I mean, uh, if we ever got to that point, we would want to staff 24 five basically uh 24 hours a day five days a week and we can't do that right now and that's needed well all right do you think that that's warranted or that the, the overtime comes in where we're not staffed obviously so yeah uh, you know when people go off you know get done at 3 30 in the afternoon there's nobody there until 10 30 at night unless they get called in for a, an issue emergency or something and uh so we end up holding some people over from the day shift and bringing the night shift in earlier to try and handle when we've got three or four breaks going on and uh, fortunately that's not happening every day but it does happen kind of like being at home you know the breaks never occur between eight and five yeah it's always after hours for the plumber always and it always takes just over an hour to fix that no matter what it is <laughs> yes yeah at my place at that hour and 15 yes <laughs> go ahead uh, um well i'm going to make a motion okay. to add one full-time utility worker in the underground um, utilities division second Waters. I'm really torn on this one, Mark, and I don't know if I'm getting it, if I feel like I have enough direction, or you know what I mean? It's If we're just not really moving on that, if you need a crew to be able to address that, what does the one do? It, How does it offset? The, the thing that I see it does, it gives a little relief to those, kind of like the police. It's, exactly. you know, well, less and that's why we're looking on, at we have to move to two right. with police. Yep. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like right. to really move that. Right. So then why am I voting for this of one if we wouldn't even vote for police for one because it's not going to make as much of an impact? I don't. Every one gives impact, obviously, and it reduces some of that. But uh, in my opinion, until you get to where you can staff a full crew, you aren't going to see enough change in overtime that that can be a offsetting factor. And you can see we spend quite a bit on overtime that's in the memo, so. Uh, and you're still gonna because that's not gonna bring that down. Yeah, because breaks, you still don't have coverage on the weekends. And <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have an idea what this does to the sewer and water rates? Any idea? We need to reevaluate to look at the rates based on the study. Anyone well, no, I mean, I think it's going to pass whether Alex and I vote for it or not, but I guess I'd be a little bit more inclined to try to figure it out if I knew what the, I mean, I know what the rates, you've given us a good idea what it is for a police officer that's tax dollars, but we just don't know rates, but go ahead and call the roll. Yeah, I, sorry. I'm, no, I guess I, I just can't right now, Mark. I'm saying no. Gretkin? Aye. Moore? Aye. Boehner? No. Scott? No, but I would like to bring this back on March 16th after we have an idea of what the rates are. I might be inclined to change my vote. Yeah. Uh, I would agree with that as well. So. Mayor, as this doesn't impact tax rates, it, it does impact sewer That's what, yeah. utility rates. Um, I would ask that we bring it back when we bring back the overall, we'll bring back a rate increase proposal. We can bring it back at that time. On March 16th? I don't know that we're bringing that back on the 16th. It'll be sometime after that. Yeah, but if we're gonna put this in the budget, we've gotta know by March 16th. So we I could, You can always amend the budget mm -hmm. since this doesn't have any impact on tax. tax oh, okay, acting. okay. That's because it's just yeah. rate. Okay. Do we need to determine whether this is a water or a sewer utility worker, Bob? Is that What's that? We that'll have, that'll play into it whether it's whether it's water, water or sewer, and sewer or strictly which one water is funded. or strictly sewer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's your. Yeah. I just want to know what it is. Is all. 
And we, if we can do that later, that's fine. Yeah. Yep. As it's a sewer utility. Because you're not going to add this person until June at the earliest anyway, July, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Can do that. Next item, number eight, discussion regarding on pourback processes and current open repairs. Report page seven. 917, 927 and 19, and we still have a street opened. 927 of 19, we still have a street open. 930 of 19, we still have a street open. When we have an ongoing annual contract to fix these. We did not have. We, we have a contract now. They're the ones that you see here that say contract awarded. I thought, we did, I thought we did an annual contract so that we did. No, it wasn't an annual. It was a uh, kind of a one-time thing. We're working on one. It's in legal right now. Then why would we not have an annual contract so we could? I mean, I just find it totally, totally unacceptable. And then, Dave, the one that's near and dear to my heart, you tried to make it look like it's 4108 Ridge, but you don't tell us what that is. You, you put it in black like you fixed it, but you haven't fixed it, or Mark did. Last memo you got, it was, you were engineering it. I've got it. It's in engineering right now to put plans and specs together. Yeah. But you blackened it like. Blackened it? It's on the back page there. Yeah, you make it look like. Page 10, it's like highlighted. Like you've done something with the, with the others and you well, haven't. I didn't put that together, so I don't know. Yeah, it's mine's blank. Well. Well, it's the, highlighted, the but there's it's highlighted no description like to the right the, that says right, what's going on. Right with all the others right 418 Ridge on page 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you on page 9, then, Mayor? Or? No, on page 10, you've highlighted 4108 Ridge. Third one down. It's highlighted, but there's no oh. explanation exactly. to the right. Exactly. Yeah. status, which like is... Right, there's no the status on it. But highlighted generally it means that we've... Working. Streets or utilities has taken care of it or the contract, but it could easily be an oversight on my part that... You know, we got the wrong one highlighted. But what mine is the didn't, status on that address? Well, well Bob, you have to figure out on a way to have an annual contract. I, we used to pull guys off one crew and two two utilities and two. We, we did that for a couple of years, and it it was successful. Uh, and we appreciate the help that we got on that. But then we started having trouble with lack of manpower and people retiring, and uh, you know people sick or whatever, injured. Uh, we had several off on, on light duty. So well, we needed that do, person uh, back. If, to, if you're going to do a um, contract, then I think you have to say you, the contractor has to do these within a certain days of notice to proceed. Or we'll be right here. They'll just go do it whenever they feel like doing it. But to wait, you know, I mean, 519, we're almost a year that <laughs> at 10th and I read, and that's set up open. I think that one's in the midst of bidding now. And no, it oh. says engineering handling. Yeah, I think, and I think Gordon said that that's ready to be bid or is bidding. Yeah, or I don't know what the specific issue with yeah. that was. That one. But, I, but but you're basically talking pourbacks. You're talking. No, usually if they get passed off to us, it means they're they're beyond just like a. A some, path. You know, some additional damage it's either into the intersection or there's utility work that needs right to on that but i'm saying most of these are just a pour back of curb and and concrete it's so much a yard minimum i'm sure they're going to bid a minimum for a hole somehow you'd have to bid them a minimum but you know, if, 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 if there's a bunch of them in the same neighborhood, so if that guy sets up, he can he's not going to get minimum on concrete. He can pour five or six at a time. And that, like I mentioned, that's in legal right now. They're reviewing that RFP. Yeah, because I'd be inclined to something like that where we're really getting more bang for our buck and making it more advantageous for our contractors to be able to do that. So, Mayor, are you saying that you want them to have 60 days, 90 days, some uh, kind of a deadline to have it filled? Yeah, I mean, filled. drive around town, you see. I do see them. Orange cones, yellow tape, five foot by six yep, foot. I do. And they're them. all over town. And I just think we can do a little bit better job 
I don't know how, but I, I've got to believe we can do a little better job than what we're doing. But it's the contractors that are doing it, not the city that are filling. Well, they used to have what they call a combo crew that they take some utility guys and they take some public works guys. Which I think Dave told me in previous discussions too did work well. Well, if you add if you add three, we get the crack pourers sealers. Maybe they could do that. But I was going to say, what are your guys' ideas for that? Because I agree that if, like, is there a way if we did that and brought that in house, could <laughs> they do this part? Right. Or because the you know crack I mean? would sealer... we be able to? Well, uh, what we could do, I mean, in, is but if our concrete street guys start going and doing all the patches, then that's that's patch strictly street patches that aren't getting done. So, I mean, we're just trading one for the other. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, these are open holes, and I, I think we could work on something to get that done quicker. But what I'm saying is is it, it's going to take away from, like, last year, or the year that we did the, the combo crew, we not only did the combo crew do it, we also were supplementing with a, our full-on street crew patching those back because they had so many that year mm -hmm. that we, you know, our numbers will, will drop from what we're actually patching that are just street repairs, does that make sense? So we're just trading one for the other. Yeah, it's not an open hole you can drive over, but yeah. you're gonna have people- But you're missing out on people that, yeah, you just wanted to patch that area or need it yeah. when people they, are gonna be upset about that as well, I get it. So that's what I'm asking is what is your suggestion? You know what I mean? Like to do both of those or is there a way if we bring really? you know, Julie's suggestion <laughs> in house, is there a way that we can I don't know how do we're going to accomplish it in-house, so I, I think we either have to contract it out or you have to have more people to work. That would be more people, though, because you'd be adding three to your ceiling crew. Well, we don't have it. We don't. We're not, that's the thing. That the ceiling crew, that's going to be their main objective is in order to get the sun as good, even if you put blankets on it and all that. that it's not. Have. Well, you're dashing my hopes for <laughs> using these guys in other areas. Well, there, there are. I mean, there's not things that they can't be used, but I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it's for more poor back. Well, most of the time when they're doing the when Just they got ideal weather to, to crack seals, the ideal weather to do the patchbacks also. Mm -hmm. I mean that's But it's not as touchy as no, doing the ceiling, no. right? Correct. Okay. Because that's gotta be warm weather basically. It's gotta be able to be cleaned out, filled yep. in, and it's gotta be warm enough to stay Adhere, melted yep. and stick. Adhere, yep. Right. Adhere, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we just need to do better about the bidding process. Is that what you're thinking, Mayor? Is that what we're saying? Is that we just yeah. want these done in a more timely manner? On a manner? blanket bid rather than a individual. And with deadlines. It can only be left open for X amount of time because having them open for a year is. And we'll take a look at that. I, don't, I think engineering potentially wrote that RFP, so I didn't see that before it went to legal, and I don't know how long, how long legal has had it. Well, and hopefully if you do a bigger bid, they'll be expedited, you know what I mean, if they're in that same area, to be able to do those. And then you probably don't have to do incentive disincentive, because they'll be incentivized to get all of that done at once, right? I mean, or as quick as possible. <laughs> we got two streets from the asphalt program last year that didn't get done, so. I suppose I'm sure they're still within the time frame of the contract, but when we did all those streets and said we were going to show some dramatic improvement to the two that would have shown the most visible would have been Stone Park Boulevard, High Traffic Street, and mm -hmm. Fifth Street would have had a more of an impact. So we I just want to make sure we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yes. the, the visible things have to be different, but anyway. Okay, what's next? We do have two informational memos that were provided. Um, number nine, regarding the library. Discussion regarding Morningside Library lot usage regulation, authorization and any fees for food trucks. Is there any discussion or questions on that? No, I appreciate that. And I'm gonna circle back with that individual and just see if it was a commercial club issue or anything like that, because, but yeah, we'll see. Item number 10, Public Works informational memo regarding crack sealing and Burton Street property lines. Report page 12. Is there any additional questions or 
Discussion? Hearing Council, as mentioned earlier, and in discussions with the mayor, we will provide monthly reports on the crack ceiling done by city staff to show uh, increased productivity. Then we'll move to the technical changes. So we can either vote on each one of them if they want to pull them out or I'll call them all and we can vote. On the well, let's go through them and then we'll take okay. a break and come back and vote. How's that sound? Sounds great. Number 11, increase the hangar division 8903 rentals and leases by 36,000. That was on page 62 that we discussed in the operating budget. Number 12, move the $2,500 budget from maintaining sculptures out of the Martin Luther King Jr. Transportation Center from the Art Center to the city council budget, <coughs> page 75 of the operating budget. Number the, hold on, the yeah, 12. Back up. Rather than the city council budget, would you rather have it like in building maintenance? Yes. Yes, okay. and uh, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. it was just more the direction of Where it was gonna wanting, yeah, it not to continually be utilized or, you know, spending that down. Cause it was just that one time replacing. A bunch of damages. Yeah. yeah, it was just fixing the broken sculpture. And make sure that it only gets used for that, not exactly. something else, I think, was our main concern. Yes. The that it was earmarked that towards that. That's my control. thing. Number 13, decrease employee compensation amount in city council budget as mayor did not accept pay increase, page 82. That's uh, who else? probably that? saves about $5 on taxes Voted right there. On <laughs> <laughs> what was the vote on that increase? No. <laughs> Number 14, adjust the budget to reflect the usage of health insurance fund balances and the two month insurance exactly. premium holiday in FY21 on page 82 as well. Number 15, reduce the budgeted amounts for regular fuel from 285 per gallon to 245 and diesel from $3.36 per gallon to 262 per gallon. And I know I, well, never mind, it's not. And just, just as a point of reference and it's in your memo, uh, Teresa and I met and we looked at uh, what current budgeted amounts were and we also looked at what the forecast, the best we could in the short period of time for uh, fuel prices over the next year and a half. And what this does is it takes the current price and adds 50 cents, which results in the reduction. Um, we looked at other things. We didn't feel comfortable going a whole lot tighter than that just because of the unknown nature of things and, and we think 50 cents is a good a good buffer to have based on what we saw. And it's probably not on this, but while we're discussing it, I just want to bring it up again. And I know Mike and I have talked about it and I've brought it up here previously too, of looking at that when we buy these, do we look at an ethanol blend? It, to the mayor's point, I'm not saying yeah. E85. I'm it not, is an ethanol blend. It's a state what, law. What level? 10%. We, I think we buy, is it the 90, 10? Yeah, it's state law, you have to. You okay. have an option. Because my thing is, is I would like to look at like the E30 blend. That's what's supposed to run about the most clean, be effective for our vehicles, not impact mileage. The, as the problem we run into is not all vehicles yeah. can run on that. So we have to buy what the majority of vehicles can run on. Oh, everyone. And no, and I'll everyone give, will run on I'll give you my, my pickup as an example. I can run, I can't run E30 on mine and mine's a 2019. No, I can't either. E85 is all I can run on mine. Yeah. In E85. The 15% is the limit for as much as I want that corn. If I go beyond that, it voids my warranty. Alex, and I can, I can speak to the, we looked at for the paratransit vehicles and they are not set up to run on E30 as well. Like a hybrid. E85. Yeah. But state law requires 10%. Yeah. They, they would put that in place back in the 90s. have to look into it. So do we go Thanks. back to agenda item? No, we're going to take a break. It's 10 o'clock. Four? It's 10, 10 o'clock. We're going to take a break real quick here. <laughs> Come back? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> you were gone for a half hour. Well, it's late. <laughs> <laughs> Did buy gas for this building? Here's our problem. We don't spend very much on gas. Had Therese call her. I'm going to split it. You already got a donut, right? Is that yours over there? Mm -hmm. 
want half a donut? Hey, yeah, I'm not going to have a full one, that's for damn sure. That's for damn sure. I asked myself when I was taking one. Why but this building, we don't spend money. I know, I just can't do it. And he's not, that's just his thinking up here. That's true. Yeah. 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 Is it? No. Is life uh, failing? No. Is his yeah. health failing? Yeah. Yeah. He's on dialysis again now. And so he's yeah. responding by not going to dialysis and drinking. Yes. And he has a How old big is he? Mm -hmm. My oldest daughter is 48, and they were born pretty close. Oh, so just so you He's way too I'm young. He's way too young to be given up. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Can they get out? I sent her an email and told her I wouldn't. Well, uh, according to, uh, I, I called uh, the PD. To it's at 1.30. Oh, what time are we done? We were, we'll be done here at 10.30. Oh, I thought it said. Yeah, he wouldn't, he wouldn't let. Oh, it'll, it'll yeah, but I got, when I got, I got out there before they did, when I got out there. I may be there. We let you into at least opening the door. Good talk to you. Yeah, we kind of got he, my foot in the door. Is he just so despondent? Yeah, and he's drinking again. He's drinking. I don't know. He, I can't. How much booze does he have in the house? I don't know. He wouldn't let us in. And the police say we can't force him to do that. We okay, here's, here's what happens. I use my phone. I kick his door in. Yeah, exactly. I'll fight with him yeah. while yeah. other yeah. people are running in and grabbing all the booze out. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and he can have me arrested for yeah. destruction of property. I'll yeah. deal with that later. And, and that's what uh, Brad kind of got after the, a couple of police officers. He did a great yeah. Right. Right. At some point, I would assault my son <laughs> to create the diversion for other people. And you can arrest me. I don't care. I'm trying to save my son's life here. Where is it? Uh huh. Okay. I said that would be. <laughs> okay, what I, I said, what I said, okay, we're going to need you to step over here so we can write out the report. And you know, <laughs> wait, people in to yeah. steal it. Yeah. Yeah. But I will. Uh, Where is it at? So he's half he's a, a, a cup of coffee. Oh, he wanted you guys arrested. Yeah. Hey, for trying to. Can I have a cup of coffee? Can, um, yes, please. Oh, you're going to. Not Mary? No. You know what? Uh, What's his name? Uh, Brad. Let me tell you. S C H O U. Got a 40 year relationship with the Iveners. Okay, okay. I do. My hey. husband. All right, I don't mean to interrupt no. you. I need to talk to you before he goes like back. Up, hasn't he? he runs uh, the. Thank you. you know, That's just how they are. Which one? Ibners. Which property, though? Walmart. Oh, this one's going bad. Can you get another kidney? I th he won't as long as he's drinking. No, but put him on if he stopped Well, because of the dialysis. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, he can get another, so and then he'd be fine. Energy he has, I don't think but he just didn't want to go through it. And I tried to explain that to him. Anyway, I said, it might be that big a than the budget right now because we didn't get that grant, so we have to decide are we allocating that. Yeah. I'll bring it back up then. Nothing they can do. Because we said if we didn't get the grant. We would get it right. Yeah, exactly. Turn this the switch off. This person will pass away. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Not, not exactly. DNR is it? Yeah. And I just need to start up with agenda item four on the police. What's that? I don't know. No, with. I'm gonna make one I don't first. Pass. <laughs> oh, you are? Huh? Yeah, I'm gonna cut. This vector's running nice. Yeah, Teresa, he had an issue. It's really I think so. He had a. Uh,
personally, I hope somebody will second it. Um, we budgeted a subsidy to the fire based upon the EMT service this year, if I'm correct, Mr. Tadmore. And now we have a potential to collect a lot of money on this program, and I think it's retroactive, right? We'll collect it. For this current fiscal year, yes. Right. And so we've already budgeted that. And so I would like to, whatever we collect on that, put in a separate fund and not use it till next year because- Similar to what we do for Red Flex, we've done for Red Flex? Yes, because sometimes, as I affectionately refer to it, it goes in the black hole and we never know about <laughs> that type of stuff. So are you talking about, we've budgeted 600,000 right subsidy. now in revenue? That's right. what we've budgeted. You're talking beyond that? We budgeted 600 in that from coming from there? Because this yeah. was brand new, is my understanding. Well, for the, we, you're saying the 600,000 for next fiscal year. Yes, for next budget. fiscal year. No, I'm talking oh, about this, this year's budget. Oh, retroactive, okay. as I understand it, yes. correct? Yep. I, I'm talking the retroactive part. Okay. I just want to clarify. To put in a separate fund. And so we'll just look as an example of a 600,000, it would be in a separate, that 600,000. Because we'd already this budgeted current that year ago. would be yeah. in a separate fund. Right. Yes. Yes, we can put that in a project. Or when we don't collect in the future? Yeah. And then it could be used in future year budgets right. or for capital right. expenses. Right. Good idea. I'll, I'll second that. That makes sense. Every once in a while he has good ideas here. I Hold the roll. I will add for future years, though, it is part of the operating, the 600 no, I know. for next year. So it's a one-time whatever it is. Yeah. Can I have that explained just one more time? Well, there's some state funding source that supposedly is going to reimburse us for ambulances and that that we did not budget a year ago. And we're supposed to get a retroactive check on that. To pay for ambulances or well, for services? It's a reimbursement services. for ambulance calls. Right. Oh, okay. That didn't right. get reimbursed in the and, and sometimes, the, I'm not being smart, it just, but sometimes it, it just goes absorbed. in the general fund and we've, we don't have it. And I just don't want, I want to make sure it doesn't get spent until the fiscal year from now. Okay. Bretkin? Aye. Moore? Aye. Shainer? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. House is 5 0. Uh, when Tim from Spectra was here the other day, he said that they were running $90,000 ahead. So it's, here's my problem is that we are asking for the same tax that we asked a year ago. And if we're running $90,000 ahead, then I think it's reasonable to ask them to take $100,000 less budget, which is a lot of one police officer, by the way. And is that a higher priority for me? It is for me to have a police officer. And the other problem is they sold a lot of advertising, which they've done a good job on them. I'm not complaining, but that should reduce our subsidy, ideally. Yes. And I don't want them to add people when the rest of us are struggling to too. So I, I know Bob doesn't necessarily agree with that, but I think it's fair if they're running 90,000. And I know it's a moving target. I know they can have a good year and a bad year, but I just think that we need to ask them to tighten the belt too. But they, they shouldn't be able to do that after three years of operation. So I would move a $100,000 reduction in their budget. And when does that end this year? It would just Their contract? June. No, no, no. It'd just be. Oh, they, they, this hundred thousand would be for fiscal year twenty twenty one. So right, their budget for tw starting July first would be reduced by a hundred thousand. And as I mentioned to the mayor, uh, they're focused on reduction of the subsidy. So what is budgeted, um, they could have a really good year where they blow through the expense side. You know, they they'd go well over a hundred thousand over. But if they have revenue to offset it, all we would have to do is amend the budget in the spring, we do a budget amendment every spring to correct the authority if they need it. Rather than now. Yeah. But I want to, I haven't talked I want to Tim about them it. to I'm have sure. a good year. Yeah. I don't think that's unreasonable. I think we, but I think they're incentivized too. Right? Yeah. Good. They and are. I haven't talked. But they've got a base no matter what. Yeah. And they, and they got a bonus no matter what from selling stuff. And if they, if they have a bonus for selling stuff and they're selling which they did. I mean, look at their numbers. Why is our tax asking the same? Where's that additional money that they got for commissions? Under the contract, they get a 25% uh, payment for any reduction in subsidies, so they are very focused on that. Yeah. We are working through the first year of, 
of their eligibility for dis, for uh, subsidy now. Um, so as I told the mayor, I'm not as concerned about what is budgeted. I'm concerned about what their subsidy is. Um, they'll either sink or swim with their reduction in subsidies. So as I said, if they come exactly. in and they- To and, the original contract, yeah. they're gonna continue to push themselves yeah. so that they have that reduction. So I don't see reducing originally. this budget really has any impact on determining what their subsidy is. So we'll Other than it puts more pressure on them to reduce their subsidy. <laughs> so we'll get a report on what you're working on with the current numbers? Yes, we will, yeah. We, you're saying? we will report back to you uh, with the first year result and related uh, subsidy okay. bonus, if any. But that's, that's the first year and they're, they're in year three now. They're, uh, they're in year one and a half. No. July 1st, the, yeah, we started in 2018. Yep. Was yeah. the first year. Yeah. July. It was January, so probably. But, the, but the, but I've had three football seasons with them. But for purposes of paying the subsidy, it started July 1st of 2018. Okay. But so they'll have completed their second year of eligible. For 10 months in and you still don't know whether they made money or not? We're working out some things. I have faith that with Teresa and myself, we'll get it done quickly. So, we, so you do have the numbers for 18. 18 to 9. Yeah, we had to establish the base for a benchmark, which through Mike and Donna and Teresa and myself, we've reached. And uh, now we are working through their 2019 numbers. Uh, now that they've been audited to determine whether there is a subsidy applicable. That's consistent with what they're on the benchmarks. That's consistent with what their contract. Yes. Yep. Rates. Is there a second? Second. Seven one nineteen. Don't take it through six thirty twenty. What? Don't we take it through June thirtieth of twenty? Yeah, but this is for twenty one. I'm making the motion, not for that time frame. No, but you said we don't have the numbers for. No, they don't. Nineteen. We're still working on whether they're eligible for a bonus payment for fiscal year 19. Oh, so that's for 18, 19. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, they won't. They won't finish 20. Uh, okay. So it's for 18, 19. You're getting the numbers. Yes. Right. And that's where you said we're a few months behind. <laughs> that's a few. <laughs> how we did that and filed our financial report and got that approved by the agencies, but that's not for my worries. That's We're working through what are elig <laughs> eligible revenues and expenses for determining. As the books are done. We're working through what are eligible revenues and expenses in determining the bonus. What's so in and what? Did they come in under budget? Um, yeah, uh, not budget. They, they came in with a reduced subsidy. Um, that's what we're working through to verify that that's correct. And what that number is, and what and what their bonus would be, because they're incentivized to reduce. Yes, will that process be simpler? Not simpler, but going through it the first time, you'll have yes. the structure. So for nineteen twenty twenty through July one nineteen through June thirty twenty twenty, it'll be. We have every hope that hope it goes much quicker around here. That's what I. Love and, if about. Can, and if well, we can, and if we can continue to encourage, and if we yeah. can continue to encourage those updates, base yeah, you know, I mean, to work through those. Once we can all agree upon the methodology and what's in the base for calculating bonus and what's not, every other year beyond that will go very quickly. No, it won't, but that's okay. Because, it will. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that you're always going to have that argu argument of what. Well, with, without going into great detail, right. there's some things that right. we'll, we'll figure out once and for all, and then it will greatly streamline the process. Okay. Aye. Aye. Shader. Aye. Scott. Aye. Waters. No. Bretkin. Aye. Passes 4 1. Okay, Dan, go ahead. Now, now we go back to agenda item four of the police with the motion to amend on the floor. Need to take a vote on that. The motion to amend is for two officers. If that passes, then we vote on the main motion, which would be. 
Second. Boehner. Aye. Scott. Aye. Waters. Aye. Gretkin. Aye. Moore. Aye. Passes 5 0. Let me explain my vote because. Um, because of the reduction in fuel, because of the reduction in the tax asking for <coughs> spectra, that is a revenue, I would say revenue, at least we saved enough to pay for those and still have that $3 reduction. And that's, so it, I'm fine with that. We need to still vote on the main motion that is amended yes before i vote just to add to that with the reduction in fuel and other costs you'll be at th I th you'll be at least a three dollar reduction if not higher or more yeah but a lot of that fuel reduction will be utilities and public works too bob yeah it won't be all tax but it will it will reduce the transit quite a bit yes which is a which is a part of the levies yes so we're reducing the tax askings if you had a hundred thousand dollar house a year ago, that went to a hundred and eight with that assessed increase. Eight percent, yes. So the hundred and eight dollar house that was a hundred now is going to experience at least a three dollar decrease in actual tax dollars. Even in the levies going down, but I don't care about the levy. Everybody says the levy's going down, but then when valuations go up eight, you still collect more. So the reality is, we're not collecting more on that same hundred thousand dollar house even with the eight percent increase right 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 Got it. The, the reason why i asked for that clarification now maybe it doesn't make any difference with this mayor and this council but so with the reduction then we don't need to have that super majority vote yes do we? we do because you're still you for, you have new construction so you're actually collecting more i mean you, you should be able to take advantage of new construction so you're still collecting more taxes you're you're, so that still triggers the super. Yeah, the we're still collecting more tax dollars. Yeah, the tax, the tax amount that we are receiving is more, but not, but not burdening. Yes, the individual it's, homes. It's right. due to the yeah. mass. Because you'll get some of those abatements. You'll get right. new construction. Right. All right. those things start to come on. So you, right. your tax. Yeah, right. You had to try to explain the pie got bigger. Yep. Right. Right. So those that are in the old pie will see three dollars less per hundred thousand, but the pie got bigger overall. Okay. I just want to make sure you've freed up more tip that type of yeah. stuff. Yeah. I just want to make sure we comply. Of course, we're going to comply with state law, but I want to make sure because some councils might have somebody that votes no on the budget and that puts a lot of pressure on the four then. And if you have yes, one of the does. four that says <laughs> that votes no, you're starting you want to talk about your pay raise or we're going to live. <laughs> <laughs> so we still need to vote on the main motion as amended. Well, and actually, so this would be the main overall, right? No, this no, no you're this still voting to add the two officers. Oh, okay. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Bretkin? Aye. Moore? Aye. Boehner? Aye. Passes 5 0. And utility worker will come back under the provision of the special utility rate. rate. Utility rate increase. So now I'll move to direct staff to incorporate all the technical changes in the FY 2021 operating budget. But at this point in time, can I just say on item agenda item 12 on the $2,500, can we be sure and somehow mark that as so it doesn't get lost in the building maintenance fund? Yeah, yeah I'm actually thinking we put it in an operating project so the funds would sit there and... Perfect. Yes. Do I need to incorporate that into the no, we will. technical changes um, motion? No, we will do that. Then we don't have to budget it each year okay. either. It'll sit there until It'll it's used and then we would add it to the budget when okay. necessary. That motion. Second. Waters? Aye. Bretkin? Aye. Moore? Aye. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Passes 5 0. I'll move 17 direct staff to balance the 2021 operating budget. And I would also encourage you, once you know what the tax asking is on that $108,000 house, that you do a press release so people know. Second. Teresa, I have a question just about what we were discussing earlier. Do we need to do that before this vote? Or is that just separate of it because it's not necessarily operating? Um, you can do that separate. Okay. So it can be after this vote. Because there was already a motion in a second. So I'm just asking. Yep. So after this. Okay. Gretkin? Aye. Moore? Aye. 
Boehner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Passes 5 0. So I wanted uh, before we move, before we go on, just a reminder then the public hearing for the budget and final approval is on March 6th. The one thing that I wanted to bring up in addition, while I have all of us here, I, we did hear back uh, that we did not receive that grant for the wayfinding. And so we had talked about it as a council during CIP proposals of where that would come from and kind of earmarking that. It's gonna be a total of 87,000 and some change. Um, in talking with finance, I, I think that we can utilize those red flex monies um, for increased safety with an additional signage um, to be able to for vehicular and things like that and pedestrian. So I, I think I want to take that action now so that we can continue moving forward with that project uh, so that it's not delayed even further, but it would be that 87,000. I would, I would say then we probably should put it in the technical changes in the budget if the money will be spent next after July 1st. Is it right now we don't budget? It's not budgeted. No, it's not. You want that also to be a, an agenda item. When does that? Uh, no, I'm saying I'm going to move meeting? now. When's the money? I, I know spend? I'm saying I think we need to have an agenda. Uh, Is the money going to be spent before July? So it's okay. It when needs to be an agenda item, but you're going to approve a budget that should have that in. Well, I and, and it'll be in a project that still it, will require a follow-up approval. This year or next year is what I'm asking. This year, before July. Yes, I this believe so. This current fiscal year. I believe then so. it'll be handled through the budget the budget amendment we don't have to do anything at this point right I'm not sure I could ask Reagan Let's find out Bob if it when, is put it on for a, <coughs> yeah. put it on for an agenda item we'll vote on it okay well we can add it to the amendment for the 20 budget if it's currently right now right but still yep. the problem with that for me is <laughs> You do a lot of that stuff that we don't even, and I'm not being critical, you have to, but I think when it's a separate deal like that, it should be voted on. What we can do is we'll bring it back to council for formal approval to spend that right. amount. We can then, if it's, we could then use current budget, put it in a right. capital project, which automatically rolls over in case it's going to be spent next year. And that solves it. Does that work, Teresa? Yep. Either have to have it on the 9th or the 16th. No, it could be no, on no, any time through the fiscal year. So you just time. approve it in this year. We'll approve it and add it to this year's budget as a capital project, which automatically rolls over to next year. Even if it's next year's that they need the money. Yep. Yeah. Budget. A capital project rolls automatically. Yeah. That's. That was why I was okay. saying we'd put that other in an operating budget or project because the projects roll over from year to year. The funds with that 2,500. Yep. Yes. Perfect. So if it does get used, right. it stays there. there we'll see it in the yep. budget every hour, every year. You only see it once it's used and needed, supplemented. If that makes sense. It does. Okay. And we would treat this the same way. Well, yes, this is a capital. It's a capital yeah. project, so capital it'll automatically roll over. the next year. And it'll always sit there until it's used. So we'll look at including it on the, an agenda next week. It has. It can be a separate item whenever. It doesn't have to be part of this. This dis operating twenty. 21 budget. But I, I think what they're waiting for, though, is to the ensure key. that the money is there so that they can move forward with the with project. The contract. Right. Okay. Yeah. He needs to get it on right away. So I'll, right. I'll work on, I can what, work on NRC. What I'd ask is a downtown partner submit a formal request that the city fund whatever the did. dollar amount is. I was going to say they did what she did that. To, and we will put it on the agenda for approval. And then that's, then up. it's done. Got that for the agenda. Okay. Because they did with the CIP. Right we up. talked about it then. But now yeah, say we did not receive that grant. So. Yeah, that's. And have her Burn forward it to time. my office. Uh, I'll let her know. She'll need that probably today. Move we adjourn. Deadline? She's second. Oh. Bretkin. Aye. Because she's off. Moore. Aye. Daner. Aye. Scott. Aye. Waters. Aye. Because she's off today, so I don't know if.